Hello, welcome to another one of my tutorials. Today we're going to be going over trigger zones and pretty much all the advanced options the trigger zone has. Trigger volume, trigger zone, doesn't really matter. But we'll also be taking a look at these extra three things that the button has. So, as I've probably already said before, the trigger zone has the most options and gave us, gives us the most power of what we can do with it. That's why the trigger zone has so many additional options that are not visible on the main main circuit itself. But first I'm gonna go simple and then we're gonna go over the button. Everything I'll be showing you, I'll be just showing you over these, these two, which we've used two times before at least. So I don't think I need to explain it anymore. If you need an explanation of these two, it's in the previous videos. So, let's start with the top. Button get is pressed. Pretty much, this is just this pin here, but standalone. So all this tells us is if the button is currently pressed while we are checking it, right? While we're checking the value. So, it needs a value, which is called a target here and it gives us a boolean okay, to true or false and it tells us if the button is pressed not the target everything the target is it's just a unique identifier of our button so this top pin we connect it here and that's all we have to do so basically this whole thing is just this pin but standalone if we ever need it in any circumstance so now we're gonna see how this works. I've showed you before, but we're gonna, gonna do it anyway. So, we're gonna go to two string and we're gonna go to the show notification. And that. So all this is doing is when we press the button, we're gonna display what two string gives us. The two string either gives us true or false. The true or false is from this chip. Now, every time we're gonna click, it's going to say true. Why? Because at the time we're pressing the button, Right, when we press the button, button is pressed. But we can also do release. So right now, there you go. False. But if you connect both, it first activates when the button is pressed and it says true. Right? Why does it say true again? Because when we press the button, we show whatever you know the show notification gets. The show notification gets its info from the two string, and the two string gets the info from the button get pressed. Get is pressed. So when we press it. The boolean is true. It's true because the button is pressed. Which means that the target, which is a button, is pressed. And that just goes in over there, shows it. And when we release it, we activate it again because we hooked this one up as well. When we released it, the button is no longer pressed. And we want to display our value. And the current value is false. Because at the time we released it, the, the is pressed is now false because the button is not pressed anymore goes there this place false so currently pressed true released false that is that for the button get is pressed next let's go over the button get text this is the mo this is another simple one basically the target again the unique identifier of the button all the all all this is doing is getting whatever is on the button so we're gonna send this over to two string now you don't have to send this to the two string. Why? Because this is text already. But since I have this here, I'm just going to run it through that. So the two string is only meant if we have anything that is not text and we want to turn it into text. So if we don't, in this case, we could just directly go to the show notification, but I'm just going to go to the two string because we're going to do it with everything. So when we click it, it says push me because this current chip has the text push me. Because all this is doing is accessing the button and it, it just sees whatever is on our button. So now, let's go over the button set text. So, button get text gets whatever is on here and button set text changes whatever text we want on here. So, what it needs is power for activation, the target, basically the button, and whatever we want on it. So... When we're gonna press the button we're gonna set some text to this button and the text we're just going to make it say hello there you go 
After that, we are gonna show whatever is on the button. So basically, what, what, what I did right now. When we press the button, we activate the button set text. The target, both of the targets are connected to the button because we're working with this button. So the unique identifier of the button is both connected to these two. So they know which button to work with. When we press the button, we activate this. It accesses the button and sets this as the text. After this chip is done, it's going to activate the show notification. Show notification gets its value from button get text. Basically, we're going to get whatever is shown on here and we're going to display on our screen as well. We click it. We have hello on our button and hello on our screen. Hello on our button because we set the text here to hello and on our screen because we get the text that is the, uh, that is here and we pass it on to the show notification. So we don't, we don't really need this at all. So we can just change this to anything else. Let me just change it to anything else. Let me be like that. Click it, anything else. There you go. These are the, uh, the quote unquote advanced settings of the normal button. It's nothing special, nothing hard. Basically, these two are the most useful because this is already in the button, but sometimes standalones are really useful uh, for what you're doing. So, let's go over the trigger zone now. So, let me take these two and let's move over here. Okay. So, we're going to start with this one and we're going to end with these two. So, we, get, we are going to be able to get through these quickly because... They're not advanced. I mean, they are technically advanced, but there's not much to say. Trigger zone, trigger volume, get filter roll. Basically, what this is, it just tells us what the current uh, trigger volume is set to, what, right? What it filters, what it accepts. So filter roll, so anything players can have. So it's going to react to only a specific player that has a spe specific role assigned to him. So all we do, we connect our trigger zone to the chip, and then this, what, our text, it'll just tell us what the current filter role is. So we're just going to do directly the show notification, and when we enter. Now, it's not going to say anything. Why? Because we haven't set any filters yet. So why don't we do that? Why? I'm just going to... Completely ignore the fact that I said f all of these first and then these two. So, yeah. Okay. So, let's take the trigger volume, set filter roll, and get filter roll. Let's work with these two first. So, we have to set a filter roll so we can actually display something. So, we're going to do that out. Okay. So, let's work with the set filter roll first so we can then actually use the get filter roll. Now, Again, the trigger volume will then only react to someone that has a specific role. So if I go under my settings here, roles, I have a role called fly. Basically this is just so, every, so I gave everyone permission to fly. And we're going to be using that to our advantage. So when we press the trigger volume, it's going to activate the set filter role. Then we have to tell it to which trigger zone to work with and then which role filter to assign. We are going to assign the filter role fly. There. So when we press it, the filter role is now assigned. So in order to now see this, let's unlock these. We're gonna we're gonna tell our our get filter which trigger zone to work with, and we're gonna send it over to the show notification. Then also trigger our show notification. There. So we're gonna click it. It says fly because it checked if there's a filter role. There is a filter role, and it tells us which one it is. In this case, fly. I'm gonna show you that it only reacts to people with the role. So how would I do that? Well, simple. I'm gonna hook this back up. So we activate it, we tell it what to work with, and let's assign something we don't have. For example, ooh, right? We press it, the filter role now changed from fly over to ooh. So what now? Well, let's hook this back up. 
uh, then use our get filter role and hook it over to the show notification. We try to, nothing happens. Why? Because the filter role is set to ooh, but I have the role fly. I don't have the role ooh. If I had it, this would have triggered. But since I'm putting my hand in there, nothing happens because it refuses to work with me because I don't have the filter role. So yeah, these are filter roles. Really simple and really, really useful. Next, let's go, let's go over filter tags. So, we need these two, and we're gonna spawn in any prop. Um, basketball. There. Now, tags are only meant for objects. So, what we're gonna do is first off do something without using these two. So, we're gonna hook up the object, enter to the show notification, and throw our ball in it. There you go. See, it reacts. As soon as the object hits the trigger zone, it reacts. So now let's use these. So when object is going to enter, this is going to get triggered. It'll see what to work with. And it's going to assign these following filter tags. And the filter tags are going to be tag1, tag, oops, tag2. There, these two tags. After that, we are gonna trigger the show notification. Right? Oh, my apologies. But I'm gonna enter. I'm gonna set those, right? But what now? We can't just display lists. Right? We can't. So, we're gonna use a circuit called get element. The get element is going to... That's a problem. get element. We're going to use the get element to basically take out one of these two tags. Now, how are we going to do that? We're going to do that in a way that we're also going to use our get filter tag as well. So, we tell it what to work with. We give the whole list to the get element. We're going to say that we want the index 0. Now, the index 0 is the first item in our list, which is tag 1. We're going to send that over to our show notification. So, as soon as an object enters in the trigger, it'll assign these following tags to the trigger zone. It's going to trigger the show notification, which gets info from get element. Let's look at this all up. And let's use the paddle. The paddle has no tags. Drop it in there, and it says tag 1. Now, if we drop it in again, it doesn't say anything. Why? Because this no longer gets recognized. Because this, right? If we look on the configure, tags, it only has the tag paddle. But over there, I have a ball that has the tag tag1. So now if we drop it in here, tag1. Why? Because the object entered will now only trigger when an object with a certain filter tag hits it. That's what happened. So, power, right? We activate the chip, we tell it what to work with, we give it all our tags that we want. And then, in my case, after that, I triggered the show notification. Now, to give the info to the show notification, we also had to use the get filter tags. So, we tell it what to access, and we tell um, basically it gives us all the tags. We give the list to the get element. The get element takes one item out of the list, and we put it to the show notification. Okay. So, we got a few left. Trigger volume, get number of objects. All this does, we tell it what to work with, and then it'll tell us how many objects are in our trigger zone at the moment. So, how are we gonna, how are we gonna test it? Simple. So, we're gonna grab a cube. We're gonna basically make a floor. That, we're gonna make it not hit it. Because we don't want this to count, we just want this as like a base. Pops, and let's use this now, right? So as soon as I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit the trigger zone, I'm gonna sh use the show notification. The show notification will get the info from the two string, and the two string will get the info from our 
main circuit, which is trigger volume get number of objects. So it's going to send an integer. The integer gets turned into string and goes in there. So, right now if we hit it, it says zero. Why? Because there's no objects in it. Now if we put, let me pick, make a pen in there. Both me, the player, and the object actually entered it. So it says one. Now, let's use a dodgeball. I'm going to put that in there. And do this. It says two. Because the make a pen is an object and the dodgeball is an object. We could also, you know, go in more. So bowling pin. Disc. Four. There you go. Let's do these. And jump over to the trigger volume get number of players. It's similar to the object, just with players. So we tell what to work with. We'll send the amount of players <clears throat> in to the two string. The two string sends it to the show notification. So when I enter it, it'll say one because I am that one player in the trigger zone and I activated it because player entered is me. Well, if I use an object, so I hook up the object entered to the show notification, drop one in here, it says zero because there's no players in the trigger zone. There we go. So these are the two last ones. Basically what these two do, they tell us what objects, like what specific objects are objects or players are in the trigger zone. So how are we going to do that? We are going to use another get element here. And we're going to move our trigger zone down because we're going to start with objects first. We're going to put a dodgeball in it. There you go. It's going to tell. Basically going to get the name of the dodgeball. So, if we put these away because we don't want these. We are gonna go for get objects. So, again, target is just our trigger zone. The list, alright, so there could be multiple and it'll basically store all the names of all the objects. I send this over to the get element. We're gonna tell it to get the first item, which is on the index 0. Send the item to the to string. The to string set, turns it into text. And we show it. So, if we hit it, dodgeball, because we have a dodgeball in it. Now, basically, the trigger volume get objects and the trigger volume get players are only, you know, additional external chips that you can already access, which is here and here. So now, let's do the same but with players. So move this one away. Take our player chip. Hook it up. And now, there you go. Fantasy. Just say fantasy because you know that's my in game name. Enter it, and I am the first to get to get into the trigger zone, and I'm the only one, so we can easily show it. So, yeah, this is it for advanced buttons and advanced trigger volumes. I hope this was clear enough to you. Uh, if, if it wasn't, and you have uh, any questions, you can ask them down below in the, U in the YouTube section in the comments or join my class discord boc ask anything about circuits there and i'll try to answer them as best best as i can